Hello, and welcome to Artificial Intelligence for Upper Elementary. This is day seven. If you haven't participated in the previous days, that's fine. You're welcome to start right here on day seven. This is a Code 5 course by me, Charlotte Dungan. I am the AI program architect at the North Carolina School of Science and Math. This program is produced in collaboration with CS's Elementary, AI for Teachers, and sponsored by Infosys Foundation USA. Today, we're going to be talking more about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a kind of computer system that learns. We give it a nickname and sometimes call it AI. And AI technology is all around us. If you've ever seen a robot moving on its own without a person driving the remote control, it's probably using some kind of AI to help it move without falling over or to navigate around obstacles. Remember that robots need senses like we have. They need sight, they need to be able to feel their environment, they need to be able to use their vestibular system so that they don't tip over. And they need to be able to navigate in new, unfamiliar places. Some robots use computer vision to see the world, and they can even use lasers to measure where they can move by measuring distances at the speed of light. Robots need a lot of practice to move and drive around naturally. Even people take a couple of years to really be able to learn to move their bodies effectively. If you think about a tiny baby growing, it takes a long time before that baby can put together what it can see and how it can move safely in the world. Even today, even though you're a big kid, you're still learning how to move your body in really um, the ways that you want to move. Maybe you're trying out a new cartwheel or you're riding a bike and those take practice and robots need that same practice. So the practice space for a robot is sometimes in the real world, but it's oftentimes in a computer. That's called a simulation. And today in this class, we're going to use a robot simulator. That's an online practice space for a robot before it goes into the real world. The simulator we're going to use is free. You should have a camera and perhaps a microphone as well, but it'll work even if you don't have those things. But the robot we're using is real. This is Cosmo. Cosmo, it's pretty small, you can see it fits on my hand, but it's got a lot of AI power inside. This robot is the best kids robot that's artificially intelligent. It can move with its treads and you can see it moves on the front and the back wheels. That means that it can do things where it's not entirely on the ground, which we'll show you in a little while. It can pick things up with its uh, lift. This is its lift here. Its head moves independently of the body so it can look around. And if you look really closely, right there, there's a camera. So this robot, although it's very small, it has computer vision. It can also hear. And it has a light. This power button is able to change colors. And so you can even change the light on Cosmo. Cosmo can turn around, can lift his dumper, he can go up in the air and he can learn. So how does Cosmo learn? Well, Cosmo often learns in a practice space and that practice space we're going to use is called Calypso. But Cosmo doesn't work alone. Cosmo has some toys. This is a cube. And you'll notice this cube has a symbol on it. Do you see that symbol right there? That is, we call that the lamp. And there's a second cube that we call the baby in the car seat. And we have a third cube called the paperclip. And Cosmo is able to interact with each of these cubes. He can detect any cube or he can detect a specific cube using the symbol on the side. These cubes also have a light built into the top. These panels right here are able to change colors and light up in order to play. Finally, these cubes have sensors built inside of them. They can tell when they're bumped or moved. Um, finally, Cosmo also has a charging port, which you might think, well, why do I need to know about the charging port? It also has a symbol and Cosmo is able to move to this symbol in, when it wants to go back home. This is where it charges. So 
Cosmo has is able to be in the real world, but we're going to use a simulation, a practice space in order for Cosmo to um, you don't have to have a real robot. So even though I have a real robot, you'll be able to to use Cosmo just as if you had the real robot only in the practice space. Cosmo isn't too expensive. And so some classrooms and some museums and even some individual kids have them, which is pretty neat. Well, we're going to start by coding today. And I wore a shirt that says create with code because you're a coding creator. We'll learn the basics, but you can always try things on your own. You can always pause and do your own thing and then come back. But how about I first show you the basic space of the learning uh, the space so that you can get a good healthy start and then we'll get started together. All right, I'm going to start by giving you the link to the space. When you go to the space, so this is introducing Cal Calypso is the practice space and Cosmo is the robot. And when you go to this website, you may have to, oh, he is the coolest. Yeah, he's the coolest. You may have to um, enable your camera and your microphone, your browser might stop you from going to this website and that's okay. There's also a little icon that shows up at the start before you get the blue background. Just say okay to your camera and your microphone and then proceed to the workspace. Here's the URL, calypso-robotics.com. That dash is right to the right of your zero. If you have all of your numbers in a row, the next key is that dash that makes that character. Okay, hopefully you're there. And I'm gonna show you what my desktop looks like. If you needed another minute, you can always pause and go back to look at the link. Okay, so here is our workspace. This is how we code in this uh, and make the robot work. We can, I'm gonna show you a couple of features and the most important is that we change the format from um, something that would be for new people into something that works for everyone. So we're going to click this home button up here and change the, the important setting before we get started. If you forget this step when you come back here another day, it'll be um, you'll find that you're missing some things and if you end up missing something it's probably because you didn't change it to normal mode so click the house and you'll hear as i mouse over everything it makes a noise so i'm going to mute my audio so that when i talk you don't hear it annoyingly the whole time okay yours will probably still make a noise though so click the home menu and then under settings it turns blue under settings, click. And then this at the top, novice mode is like, if you play a game and it, you set it on easy and you don't have quite all the same options, this that's what novice means. So we're gonna click one time and it turns back to yellow and it says, okay, now this is normal. We want normal mode, okay? Make sure you have it on normal. And then this space that we see here is our coding space. And the thing we're coding right now is shown right here. This is the robot. In this coding space, we're coding the robot. If we want to see the space where the robot is able to um, move around and pretend to be in the real world, that is this green arrow. So the green arrow moves you into where we can see the robot simulation. Let's click that robot simulation play button right now. Click, and there is our space. So this is the Cosmo robot right here. That's what it looks like from the top. We're looking down on it. And you can see this is the paper clip right there. That's the paper clip block. And then this one here is the lamp. And down here is the baby in the car seat, okay? You can see the charger up here as well. And this is sort of the play space for the robot. This is the, the simulation of the table or the floor where you might be using this robot at home. It has all the same features and you can interact with this space too. You can, for example, grab a cube. You can click it and you see I can move it around. And I can also, when I click it, I'm actually tapping on it. See how it 
flashes open a little bit. So we can also like move this space around, but for the most part, we want to leave our simulation space alone so that we can control it by programming. So this is sort of where we would build our world before we played in the world, if that makes sense. You may also have a video screen happening and mine is over here in the corner. It's, uh, I don't know why it's stuck in the corner. There it is. You can pause it. So this is me talking and you can see me. And this is pretending that the Cosmo robot can see, remember it has computer vision. And so it's using your webcam as if it were the camera that were right there on that. And the reason that it's using your face is because this can recognize you and talk to you by name. So we are gonna turn that camera off for today. We might use it another day though. So just pause it, it you don't need it to keep going and I'm gonna tuck it away um, because we're not gonna use that feature. You'll also notice it's saying what I'm saying at the top because Cosmo is a robot that can both see and hear. And it's listening right now as I speak. It can process what I say to play games. That's a pretty cool feature. So now in order to go back to our programming space and do some coding, we need to hit the stop button. And all that does is tucks away our practice space so we can open it again later. Let's turn off our practice space for now by clicking the stop button. And then we can always just get, hit the green button again whenever we want to open it. So it's not lost, it's just tucked away so that we can do some coding. Guys ready to code a robot? Oh man, I love this language. The first thing we're gonna do is teach our robot how to move around. And this part is not AI. Robots that are controlled with artificial intelligence usually have the option to control them with a controller as well. I'm going to show you a picture of what our code is going to look like, and then we'll come back to our workspace. Here it is. So you can see from this picture that you can drive your Cosmo robot in the practice space with an Xbox controller. You can also just use your keyboard, and that's what I'm going to do today. Not everyone has an extra game controller laying around, but it is nice if you have a real Cosmo robot and you're programming with the practice space that you use that controller because it's just a little bit easier to navigate around. So when we choose the gamepad choice as we build our code, it works just as the same with your keyboard and we'll use the arrow keys instead of the little part that we would do with our thumb. And our first block of code will allow me to drive the robot without artificial intelligence. I'll drive it just like any other remote controlled car. Okay, so that's what we're gonna start with just so we can learn to code. I'm gonna go back to our coding spot and we're gonna get started. Okay, so with your arrow keys, you can move around this pencil. You can also just click wherever you want something to happen, but you can, you can move your arrow keys to move around in the code blocks and you can click the plus sign in order to add code. The format of this is always when something happens, do something else. This is event driven. We're looking for an event to happen. When I see a color, when I see a cube, when I hear a sound, when I see a certain face that I like, when I'm moving, whatever it is, when something happens, I want an action to follow. So I'm going to click this plus sign by the when right there, click. And the first thing I'm going to do is say gamepad when I get a control from the gamepad. Remember, we're going to use our keyboard, but it shows the gamepad picture. So I click and that block fills in there. You've got it, awesome. Okay, so now I can either add another command to the win, or I can just say what I want it to do, which is move. So I clicked up at the do, click, and then I chose move. So now I've made a command that when I press the gamepad, the robot will move around. Should we try it? I think so too. I'm going to press my green run program to open up my space. And then I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move my robot around. 
Now you can see my words are appearing, my robot is moving, and if I press the side to side buttons, the robot will turn. I can even press them at the same time and move in lots of different directions. You'll notice over here in the space where I can still see my code, as I drive, I better, I better click, <laughs> there we go. As I drive, that code is flashing. That tells me that that's the block that's running. If we have a lot of different events that might happen in the same game, we can tell which one is actually working because while we are playing in the, in the simulation space, we can see the one that's flashing and turning on to run. So here I go moving around. All right, take a minute and practice driving your robot around. We'll take a little break here and come back in a minute where we can work on our next block of code. I'm gonna leave my code up here so that you can copy it if you're having any trouble. If you're still playing with your robot, that's fine. Just press pause in the simulation space on your video and then you can keep working in the simulation space or with the code. You can always pause and then come back. Now, we're gonna learn a couple of rules or laws about this Calypso practice space. The reason they're called laws, it's not like a law that tells you not to cross the street when the light is red. It's a law like, how the universe works, like gravity is a law, right? It means that we can't get away from it. And so it's just part of how the world works. The Calypso laws tell us how the world of the simulation works. You can't get around them. It's just how it works. And so when you write your code, you have to follow the laws. The first law of Calypso is right here. It says that the, the rule that it's following always picks the closest matching object. So as we read this block of code, it says, when Cosmo sees the cube, move toward the cube. But what happens if we have three cubes? Well, this law says it's always going to pick the closest cube. So if I have two cubes like this, and if I has Cosmo over here, it's going to choose the paper clip to do the next action. It's not going to choose the baby in the car seat because the, the law in Calypso is that it always chooses the closest object. That becomes really important if you're trying to play a game with cubes and you can code it so that you say which specific cube you need if that's important. If you don't specify which cube, it'll always go to the closest matching object. Let's code this first line that we saw here. We're gonna do it together. So you'll watch my space and I'll show you the code that was listed. It says, win Cosmo. So I'm going to choose the plus on the win and I'm going to choose Cosmo. When Cosmo sees, and that's that top option right there. When Cosmo sees a cube, and you'll notice I could say the paper clip, the lamp, or the baby, but we're going to choose any cube. When Cosmo sees any cube, click, and then what, he sh what should Cosmo do? Cosmo should move, and that's the top option. Cosmo should move. If we stopped right here, then Cosmo would just, well, let's see. Let's try it out. Let's go into our practice space and see what happens. Cosmo is seeing and moving. But is Cosmo moving the way that we want to? Well, we haven't really said which way we want it to move. So it's moving in a strange kind of way. What I would like Cosmo to do is go to the cube. So I can add more information right here. When Cosmo sees the cube, don't just move, 
but move toward it. We could also say we want it to move away if it's afraid of a cube, or we could have it, you'll saw, it was kind of wandering around. Um, it can move backwards, it can move ahead straight. So if it sees a cube and the cube is over here, and the Cosmo is pointed this way, it might be able to see it kind of like you can see out of the corner of your eye, but it'll just keep going straight. It won't go to the cube. So the one we want is to say, move toward the object that I'm asking you to find and then say what that object is. So the reason that it says it instead of a cube is because we can change out this block, this cube block to be something else like the charger. And if we changed it to the charger, is if Cosmos sees the charger, then it would move toward it, not the block. But in this case, we want this charger to be a cube. And so that's what we have here. When Cosmos sees the cube, move toward it. Let's try this block of code. It worked. All right. And the purple dots are the path that Cosmo planned to get to that cube. How about you take a, a few minutes and experiment with this. See if you can have Cosmo go somewhere else. Maybe it's a specific cube and maybe it's the charger. Maybe you could have it move away instead, but make sure that you understand how this works. And remember the first rule of Calypso is that it always moves toward the closest matching object. I'm going to leave that rule up there and you can also copy the code if you need it. Hopefully you've had a chance to play with this new rule. If you need more time, simply pause, finish up what you're doing, and then come back to the video. So we have a difference between the rule that we started with, which was when we use the game pad to move, and the second rule that we created, which was when I see a cube move toward it. This top one is not artificial intelligence because we're saying exactly where we want Cosmo to move. The second one is using artificial intelligence. It's both using computer vision to recognize a cube or a face or a charger, and it's planning a path in order to drive there successfully. That's pretty challenging. And that's what that purple dotted line shows is the path that the robot is planning in order to move. The red line, when you go to the practice space, is, this, is what Cosmo is seeing. So the red line shows the seeing and the purple line shows the path planning. Path planning is a really important feature of artificial intelligence that robots use in order to figure out where to go. Path planning is also built into things like Google Maps, and that's how it gets you to where you need to go in the fastest way. You could also use Apple Maps or Waze or so, any other program, but anything that takes you from one place to another has to plan a path. And it can change that path based on your needs. Like this a, a plan for a path wants you to move to the object in the fastest possible way. But you wouldn't want a real car to do that because it might drive through someone's lawn or someone's house. It might need to detect objects in the way, right? And plan a better route that uses roads, for example. So path planning is a really important thing that robots do. We'll talk more about that tomorrow on our next workday. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the next rule of Calypso. Remember these are laws and that means it's, it's like how this works and not like a legal law. And the second law of Calypso is if there's a rule that can run, 
it will run. That means that it can do more than one thing at a time. Some coding runs like a book. You read page one and then you read page two and then you read page three. But this says, hey, if page one has what I need and page three has what I need, I will run all of that at the same time. And I don't have to do it in order. So in this case, we've got a couple of different rules where it can see and move at the same time. Okay, so any rule that can run will run. That means if you're running more than one line of code that you'll be able to run them at the same time. Let me show you what that means in our current space right here, okay? This means that I can control my, my robot and it can see the cube at the same time. Let's open our um, practice space, our simulation. And so you can see that I am trying to run this and I'm moving backwards. Do you see that? I'm moving and it's moving toward the cube. And we're fighting those uh, by running both laws at the same time. So as I back up, the robot moves forward as soon as I stop pressing the key because both rules are running at the same time. This means that when you're coding, sometimes you have to thoughtfully think about whether you want something to um, be written in a different way. Like, is it going to see this cube and move toward it forever? That's a really important question. And it might be a way that you code something a little bit differently or add some more features to slow it down. But for now, we are going to um, make a couple of changes to our code and we'll get into those more complicated things another time. So before we said, when we see a cube move toward it. But what if we ch make a parameter change here? What if we said, instead of cube, what if we said a color? What if we said a red cube? When I see red and I'm going to add cube. So the way I was able to change that is I clicked on one of these and that allowed me to change it by clicking where I had already worked. If you have a mistake, maybe you've put something, there's an extra cube block or something like this, you only get the option to change it. The way that you delete, it shows over here. It's in this menu bar and it says function delete. And that means you're going to hit the delete button while you're clicking on, let's say this one. So if you make a mistake, this is how you fix it. And it's kind of tricky. So you click, if you were on that block where the pencil is, and the pencil tells you where you're at, as long as your pencil is there, if you hit delete, nothing happens. But if you hold the function button, which is on my keyboard says FN, then you can push function and then delete. And it will remove that block that you were trying to, to get rid of. If you make a mistake and you're just really having a hard time, that's one way to clear it. The other thing you can do is just take this, this whole thing and maybe you could delete this whole thing. Um, the way that you do that, I don't want you to delete everything that you've done. So just only if you have a mistake, make sure you delete that there, okay? All right, so I wanna add a block where I say red for my cube. And when Cosmo sees a red cube, move toward it. So if I play that right now in my simulation space, Cosmo isn't going to move because none of the blocks are red. Well, let's close our simulation. And remember at the start, I said we were programming Cosmo and Cosmo is right there in the corner. The thing that we can do is code something else. So let's code, and I'm going to click on the robot, and I can code something else. So I could choose a different cube, for example. I could choose um, either the paperclip, the lamp, or the baby. So in this case, I'm going to choose cube one, which is the paperclip and I can see the picture of what I'm working on right here. Now there's the code has disappeared, but it's not gone. It's just over here on the robot. The code that we're going to update now is how to change this cube. The cube I'm on is the paperclip. And I'm going to choose an action when the cube is, is tapped. That means someone touches it. 
then I can do an action of glow. And that glow, I could stop there or I'm going to choose a color. And that color I'm going to have is, oh, purple. When I tap a cube, glow purple. Let's press play. The reason I'm not choosing red yet is because that's what I have over for Cosmo to chase. And I don't really want Cosmo to chase my color yet. So I'm going to hit play. And then if I tap this block, nothing happens. But look, purple, purple is because a block was tapped. Look, the purple is lit up. OK, so that's what we said when this cube is tapped glow purple. Did you notice it was the wrong cube though? Wasn't that strange? I think I wanna say the cube that I'm on. So I'm saying when I, a cube is tapped, that's cube one glow purple. That way when I press play, if I tap a different cube, the one I was playing doesn't light up. Now there are good reasons that you might tap one cube and have a different one light up. Like if you were playing a game that made a music um, sound and lit up different cubes based on the beat that you were playing, maybe one is your drum and the other is sound and music and you are doing a little light show, um, that would be a good reason why a different cube might light up. But if you, if you ever get into a spot where it seems like the Calypso interface is doing something strange, it's probably because you need a little bit more detail on your rule. Not just that you feel a cube tapped, but this one specific cube was being tapped. And then it glows purple. Cool. Now I'm going to change my color for this rule to red because I want my red cube to be up in the, uh, I want it to work for my other code that I have over on my robot. So over here I have, when I see a red cube move toward it, and then when I go to my cube, when a cube is tapped below red. So now I have a way to turn my cube red, which is really important to follow the other rule. I'm going to go into my run program in the simulation space and I am in the cube space, which is very strange. Let's go back, let's hit stop. Hmm. Let's see. It looks like my Calypso just completely died. Oh, well, okay, well, I'm going to show you the third rule of Calypso while I fix my code. Hopefully you have a minute to try out the code that we've already started, okay? We've got the red cube and how it runs. And then this one, there's one more rule that's really important that I want to show you that will influence your code that you're trying right now. The third rule of Calypso is that if you have more than one action that conflicts, the earliest one in the code wins. So for example, if I say, when Cosmo sees a red cube move toward it, and when Cosmo sees a blue cube move toward it, well, those, both of those, it can't do both. If I have two cubes that are lit up and one is red and one is blue, and Cosmo can see both of them, and they're the same distance apart, I probably need this rule to say, okay, the code that's written first is the red one. So I'm going to move to the red one instead of to the blue one. And that's how this might come in and in, in, be important because you may have coded something that has a conflict of whether it's gonna go to red or purple. And you can experiment with this in the next minute and then we'll come back together. We'll see you in a minute.
Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to play. I've also set up my game so that I can play too. I want to show you how it's working on my end. Here we go. I'm going to hit play for my simulation. And there is my robot. It's not moving because I haven't turned any of the cubes red. If I click this one, it makes a plan and moves toward it because it now is a red cube. If I turn that cube off, oh, I might have to, might have to move it. Now we can't see it. And that's because it's all grayed out. If I drive my robot though, and I turn it, and you can see it's using that rule, it may start to fall into the vision and there it can go again. So you can grab the things and move them around. And remember that Cosmo, just like you, doesn't have eyes in the back of its head. It can only see facing forward. So if you're moving your robot around, you can change where and when it sees the cube that's lit up, just like that. Awesome. So today you learned how to program the Cosmo robot using the Calypso practice space. Real robots, including self-driving cars, use practice spaces just like this to learn how to move around safely in the world. Remember that artificial intelligence systems require a lot of data and millions of practice times in order to apply what they learn in their practice space into the real world. Cosmo is able to move in the simulation so smoothly because it's already practiced a lot of the algorithms to move its robot space to where it needs to go. And even to be able to pick up these cubes with the little hooks like that. In our next session, we'll continue practicing with Cosmo in his Calypso practice space and explore more artificial intelligence features. I hope you keep playing and we'll see you.